Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to learn about what are APIs and what kind of problem do they actually solve for us. Now, if you want to create some sort of web enabled application where your application gets data from the backend, now you need some sort of protocols or clearly defined rules of how your application can receive data from the backend and what will be the representation of the data which your application is going to get from the web server and how should a request be laid out so that the web server can understand whatever your mobile application or your web enabled client is requesting from the web server so apis help us in doing just that so if you want to understand like what are apis in layman terms most of you might have encountered these sort of wall sockets in your house or in your offices now these sockets provide us with an interface using which we can connect our electrical devices so that those devices get power from these sockets now you don't know how these sockets are receiving the electrical energy from their backend and their backend can include power generators, transformers and other several electrical based interfaces which are actually setting everything up so that you can receive electrical energy in your electrical socket. But as a consumer, you are not concerned about how these power generators are implemented, how these transformers are implemented, how power generators and transformers are interacting with each other, where they are located and what all these other interfaces are that are playing some sort of role in setting everything up you can consider this wall socket just like an api because it is a interface which enables you to get some sort of electrical energy out of it and you are not concerned about the implementation detail now let's take up a practical case study now you have some sort of company and you manage the details of your employees you want to implement a system maybe a mobile app where you or your users can easily get data about other employees in a simple way so how would you design a system first of all you are going to require a database so that you can store the information of all your employees then on top of that you are going to require some sort of programming language or application software so that you can program that software to fetch data from the database and provide it to the user now you have fetched your data from the database but your clients are sitting at the other end of the internet and they don't know how to receive that data in that particular case you need some sort of interface so that client can request the data using the internet and then they can receive the data and the interface should also enable the communication in such a way so that both of the parties can understand each other. So let's have a quick look at it. Suppose this is the system which we have talked about. This is the database and this is the application programming language or a software which can fetch data from this database. Now let's consider you have some user which is requesting the data of an employee who is having 123 as his employee ID. Now, API sits between your backend and the user. API receives the request from the user in this sort of format. So website.com is the address of your server. Slash EMP is the route or you can say the resource route and 23 is the employee ID. Okay, there is some mismatch but uh, let it be. You get the gist right. The API is going to receive this sort of information from the user and it is going to request this application programming language to get the data of employee number 23 from the backend and provide it with the result. Now once that data is ready, the data is returned to the API. Now it is the responsibility of API to format the data in such a way so that the end client can understand the format. Now if our end client understand json format the api is going to format the result it has got from the backend in json format 
JSON format is basically a JavaScript notation format and it is a very popular format used for interchanging data between web enabled application. Now there are other formats like XML as well and you can read more about the thing from the internet. Okay. Now this whole thing is a demonstration of RESTful APIs at work. Okay. So this is how RESTful APIs are implemented. Now there are other sort of patterns like SOAP and WSDL which are also contenders of RESTful APIs pattern but RESTful APIs are the most popular one. So basically API abstract away the implementation detail and you are only concerned about what sort of data you can request from that API and in what format you are going to get the data and you don't have to concern yourself like what kind of database is actually powering the backend, what kind of application software is actually powering the backend and how can you technically interact with those sort of softwares. You don't have to be concerned about all of those issues. Now let's consider a real world case study. Now if you are a person who likes to shop online or you might have used Amazon at some point of time in your life, right? So as you might be aware that Amazon has both the mobile clients and the web clients and both of these clients are equally capable to show you the data and all of the details of the product. So both of these clients are being powered by the very same API which is sitting right in Amazon's data centers or web servers. So in case you want to program some sort of messenger or an e-commerce application, you would probably have to write some sort of API to power your Android, iPhone or web enabled application. So with that, this is your guy Rajat Saxena signing off. Take care. Bye bye.